that got her here. We just got to Atlanta International Airport and we're about to start the second part of our summer holiday. We're gonna take you along and in six different areas, we're gonna talk about the things that we miss the most about the US when we get here and also the things that we miss about Denmark when we're away and wish we could have the luxuries that we enjoy back in Denmark. Yeah, so we're going to take you along to six different places in the U.S. We are really glad that you enjoyed our video taking you around Philly. So we're going to take you around the American Southeast and then end with the night in, in New York before we head back to Copenhagen. Yeah, so let's get ready. And remember, along the way, we're going to be talking about the things that we miss the most about the U.S. and enjoy when we're back here and the things that we miss about Denmark when we're away. Let's go. So now we're coming to you from Atlanta, and in fact, the Centennial Olympic Park, which was the heart of the 1996 Olympics. This is a big deal for me, because I love the Olympics. So this has been a major bucket list item for me to come here to Atlanta and be able to see the park that was the hub of everything here in the 96 games. Yeah, and while we've been here in Atlanta, one thing that really sticks out to us and we've realized that we actually miss about American culture is the fact that you do have top line service. Now, I'll be clear, we don't like when our servers or bartenders kind of hover over us, but there have been a number of times where we've sat down, just the two of us, at a, at a bar or somewhere that we are kind of just the only people we know, and we it's kind of nice to have the bartender come over to you and introduce themselves, ask where you're from, have a little bit of interest in you, um, where things aren't quite as transactional. Now, I don't mean that I like service where uh, they're kind of treating you like, I think the phrase is a curling bomb. Um, you know, that can be really annoying. Yes, I'm fine. Yes, I'm still fine. No, you don't need to refill my water. I only had one sip. But it is nice that um, if you walk into a place, you're kind of asked how your uh, trip has been or where you're from and people take a little bit more interest in you. Yeah, and that chattiness goes everywhere. I mean, this is a place where we're waiting in line for getting on a bus or waiting in line at a store and someone's going to be talking to you. And even cases where we've been sitting having lunch and someone's looked over and said, oh, what's that you're eating? And we've done the same exact thing too. Everyone's just chattier here and it's kind of nice. It's a little refreshing. Yeah, I, I don't like it all the time, but it is something that mm, on this trip has uh, been a bit refreshing. Um, sometimes you're just not in the mood for it, but I found that it's been uh, kind of nice when you're on holiday and just kind of relax. But I will say while we're here, and especially on the drive into Atlanta today, reminded us that one of the things we miss about Denmark is just the ease of getting around. I mean, especially since we live in Copenhagen, public transit is amazing. Bike lanes are everywhere. The city is eminently walkable. Here in Atlanta, you can't live without a car. Sure, there's some public transportation that you can take, but it doesn't connect that, that well unless you're maybe a, a commuter you're going through some specific places in the city. You are so car dependent we're in the U.S. And that's something that's been a little bit annoying for us because honestly, we've gotten used to being without a car. So that's something we miss about Denmark. Mark is being able to hop on a bike or a metro or a train or a bus and being wherever you want to go and having no problem at all. Yeah, this is a huge city in the U.S. and it's just kind of bizarre that there's just not an ease of uh, ease of getting around uh, yeah. without the use of a car. Yeah. Okay, we are beaming into you from the beautiful city of Savannah, Georgia. It's right on the coast in southeast Georgia, and it's known for these beautiful squares behind us. We are coming to you from Madison Square, which is named after the fourth president of the U.S., and there are a ton of beautiful squares just like this dotting the city, and it's been really nice to enjoy them. Yeah, and being here in Savannah reminded us of one of the things that we do miss about being in Denmark, which is that there aren't any weird alcohol rules. Savannah is one of the few cities, we can think of New Orleans as one of the only other ones in the U.S. where there's no open container law, meaning that you can take a drink in a plastic cup outside, have a drink in a park, and nobody cares who's going to stop you. In fact, we've had cases back in Philadelphia where we were enjoying some wine in the park and got yelled at by an officer because the little bottle of wine was showing. Not the case in Denmark. In fact, one of our favorite things is to have people come over and we go to a 7-Eleven, give them a tall beer in their hand to walk around the city so they can experience what life is like without crazy puritanical alcohol laws like we have in the States. Yeah, so it's been nice to do that in Savannah. And you can also do that. The only other city I know that we can do that in is New Orleans, one of our other favorite cities in the U.S. Um, but one thing that we do miss about America that we really realized while we were in this leg of our trip is how it's really easy and common to make short-term friends and meaning friends like we did a, a food tour and it was us and, uh, and 10 women all ages, some mother-daughter combos and it was just really fun to hang out with them for the day and we all knew that it was a short-term friendship that we probably weren't going to keep in touch, meet up later, but it's something that a lot of Americans do when they're on holiday and you just kind of uh, roll with it that you're going to be friends for a short period of time like the two hour or three hour food tour that we were on 
But by the end of it, we were all buying each other drinks and sharing stories and talking about where we come from and things like that. It's not to say that that can't happen in Denmark or that uh, people in uh, Denmark and Danes don't do that kind of thing, but Americans just like go right away into, into a friendship. And we've talked about it in several other videos that Danes like to take a little bit more time and get to know you a bit. So it's nice being able to just have that, uh, that friendly hospitality of people that are on a, a tour group with you and make those two hour friendships. And if you guys that were with us are watching this video now, we had such a great time with you guys. Yes. Thanks for watching. Thanks. So now we're coming to you from Charleston, South Carolina, and this is one of the more important cities in the United States because it's a historic one. It dates back to the colonial era and it was always one of the biggest cities because it has a natural harbor and it was always one of the biggest ports in the south. It's also famous because this is where the first shots of the American Civil War were shot. Shot from outside of Charleston Harbor here onto Fort Sumter, about three miles out in the harbor behind us, and we had a good chance to visit that while we were here as well. Yeah, and uh, it's funny that you mentioned the Civil War because in some ways that leads us right into one of the things that I miss personally about Denmark. Uh, strange connection, right? But it deals with the fact that America is just constantly politically divided and everything is politicized. In fact, just walking to this point where we decided to film today, we walked past a political protest. Last night we were on a tour, a ghost tour, and the person leading and directing the tour went out of his way to mention the fact that he hates one news network that seems to be aligned uh, with the political left. And uh, he mentioned numerous times that he thinks that the Civil War was a not yet over uh, war for Southern independence. Just things that didn't need to be said on a ghost tour. Uh, I just wanted the ghost stories. <laughs> Yeah, and it's honestly, it's something that we see every time we come back to the U.S. We're sitting at a bar and there's channels that are on spouting whatever kind of news there is. It's something that we just honestly have gotten frustrated in our time over here. We're used to being a little bit removed from it living abroad, but also in Denmark. You just don't talk about politics in such a sporting-like way as it does in the U.S. Yeah, everybody's got their team and their tribe and they have to hate all of these things and like all of these things. And it's just not a good way to live yeah. constantly thinking about those yeah. things. But we also have one thing that we miss about the U.S., and this seems kind of minor by comparison, but it's the fact that we miss all the selection that we get over here. We're about to go to, to a mall to do some clothes shopping for ourselves, and we're going to have a plethora of options. We're going to go to a Target or a Walmart where you're going to have rows and rows of stuff. You just don't find that same sort of thing in Denmark, where when you're in the grocery stores, you get maybe one or two choices of something. In the U.S., you have 10 different brands to choose from. Uh, same thing, when you go to a restaurant, we've heard complaints about restaurants where the menu was too small. And the menus here are typically three, four pages sometimes. So it's, it's funny how just that difference in selection is something that we, we kind of miss about the U.S. because sometimes you want a broad choice that you have. Yeah, and it's a bit of an adjustment. Sometimes it can even be overwhelming. We talk about this in our video about uh, reverse culture shock, uh, where it takes a little bit to getting used to, but once you have it, you really like the fact that um, there's really no end and there's so many different flavors and options and customizations that you can have on things that you order, uh, all the different uh, cheap clothing options, and it's kind of nice. So here we are about a mile above sea level or 1600 meters for you metric fans out there. And we're here in the Appalachian Mountains. We're in Eastern North Carolina, uh, outside of a city called Asheville. And it's a famous town for its breweries and art culture. And it's a beautiful spot here in the mountains. And actually we're not too far away from the highest point on the whole East Coast. It's about 6,600 feet tall, Mount Mitchell. It's a beautiful way along here. We're driving along what's known as the Blue Ridge Parkway. It actually runs all the way from North Carolina to Virginia on the Appalachian Mountains, one of, one of America's amazing driving byways that you can take. We had an amazing day driving here in the mountains. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. One thing that this portion of our trip made us realize is just how lucky we are in the U.S. to have such a diversity of landscapes and uh, natural areas. And this region is one that we haven't really been able to explore before. And we're so lucky that we're here right now on our trip. And it's, it's really made us just be so thankful for the beautiful nature that we have here and the diversity um, that comes with that nature. Even the fact that basically any day of the year you could fly to a different point in the United States and find uh, summer, winter, fall, spring, whatever it is you're looking for, mountains, beaches, lakes. We, we've got so much here that a lot of Americans really take for granted. And I know we certainly do from time to time. 
Yeah, and that also leads us to one of the things that we miss about Denmark being here, which is the commitment towards conservation and towards fighting climate change. I think one of the things that we challenge, that challenges us here in the U.S. is that there's still not a consensus that climate change is real. And it's treated like a political football, even though we're seeing the whole West burning. And it's kind of a reassuring thing when we go back to Denmark that there's commitments like Copenhagen to be a carbon neutral city and a commitment towards renewable energy and being fossil fuel free in, not that, in the not too distant future. And that commitment just doesn't exist here in the U.S. and we miss that about Denmark. Yeah, and being somewhere like this really drives home the point that um, we're lucky to have that in Denmark and hopefully America will keep making progress in that direction. Hey y'all, we're coming to you from Rock City, which is this awesome attraction in Northwest Georgia. It's about a 10 minute drive from Chattanooga, Tennessee, where we spent last night. And in Rock City, you can find these ancient rock formations that have trails weaving in and out of them. It's uh, almost like a German style uh, outdoor garden. And the highlight is Lookout Point, where you can actually see seven states from uh, the top of this uh, awesome uh, rock outcropping and it's just really really pretty and uh, we, we've enjoyed our time here so far and being able to see seven states from that one point really kind of made us realize one thing that we miss about the US which is just the diversity of people and culture and history that uh, we get to live in, in in America you know there's so much history of immigration and all different types of people and cultures that mix together in, in the U.S. And it's just really neat to have that uh, reminder as we've traveled around this region of the country and just see quite how America's diversity is its superpower. Yeah, it's neat. Like everywhere we've gone, we've met people from different parts of the country, different backgrounds, different histories, different stories. And it's been really neat taking advantage of the chattiness of Americans to learn a little bit about this as we're kind of tourists in our homeland once again. But being here also reminds us one of the things that we miss about being in Denmark, which is there's a, a little bit less of that kind of toxic masculinity and kind of nastiness that sometimes you see. It's a dark side of American culture sometimes. And we've seen some experiences of that where whether it's people yelling at other people, there was a bar that we were in where somebody had just a complete outburst and was screaming at people and the cops had to be threatened to come. And to be honest, you don't really see that that much in, in Denmark. People kind of take it a little bit calmer. Nobody goes crazy. Obviously, we know that people drink and go out and have a good time, but it's a different culture that way. Also, we've seen some cases where there's kind of a still kind of a hidden machismo in American culture, too. There's a, a case where we went out to, to dinner in Charleston, and there was a, a group of three couples that were there dressed up as 1920s flappers, but one guy decided that that was maybe not cool enough for him to do or not manly enough for him to do. So he just had a black t-shirt that had white letters on it saying, this is my 1920s outfit. Like, you took all that time to make this outfit saying that you're too cool for this rather than having the fun like everybody else. It, it's just that kind of attitude is something that you see in America. And it's something that we honestly don't miss being in Denmark. You don't get that in the same way. Yeah, that really bothered you. It really bothered me. It's like, have a good time. You're out here with your wife and two other couples or whatever. Like, enjoy it. Like, you don't have to be a jerk or try to think that you're too cool for something like this. It kind of bothered me. Yeah, I, you have some feelings. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I think that could be an entire video uh, where maybe we will do that in the future and talk a bit of just kind of the differences in sort of the insecurity of, uh, I think, American cis hetero men uh, uh, kind of have compared to Danish men that are much more secure, I think, in their masculinity and their gender roles. Um, so yeah, something we miss about Denmark is maybe just the fact that the culture, especially when people are out drinking, is just a little bit less aggressive. We definitely, <laughs> we definitely didn't really miss that uh, aggressive nature of <laughs> American, uh, American culture. Well, now we're at the last stop on our journey in New York City. And where else could we be except in front of the iconic Stonewall Inn? This is where in June of 1969, the famed Stonewall Riots happened, where a group of LGBTQ individuals stood up against the discrimination they'd been feeling, particularly against the police, decided to fight back, and this is where they say Pride was born. It's kind of incredible to be standing here, and after 50 years, it's now a national monument, and there's a park dedicated to those riots to this day, just showing the progress that we've had towards gay rights. And one cool thing that we do miss about being back in the U.S. that we've especially experienced in New York and all the other places that we've traveled over the last three weeks is kind of the familiarity of how everything works. Um, it's kind of nice to just sort of let our guard down and be familiar with everything going on around us, whether it's cultural things, how to get around, what people mean by certain phrases. 
Um, you know, all of those things that we had to slowly unlock over time while we've been living abroad in Denmark, we just know when we're in the US. And we kind of take for granted how nice it is to go through your day and not have to wonder what anybody is really meaning or saying or thinking or doing, and you just know how everything works. And the flip side of that is probably one of the things that we do miss about being in Denmark or abroad is that because everything is so familiar, we miss that excitement that comes with everything being new. I mean, even having lived in Denmark for four and a half years, there's still every day where we come across something new or we have to figure out kind of how things are, are operating or kind of what something means in the news or things that are going on. So there's always that little bit of thrill that we have, which is having to navigate how things work. And so that's exciting about living abroad. It's something that when we come back to the US, we realize that we miss. We kind of get a high from that. Yeah, so that extra degree of difficulty does make things really fun and really nice. And we do enjoy that about our life living abroad. And thank you guys so much for coming along with us as we've gotten to go to these different spots around the US. We've really enjoyed talking to you about the things that we miss while we live abroad in Denmark and the things that uh, we miss about Denmark when we're back here in the US. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the topic. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you hit the bell to be notified when we drop new videos, usually every Thursday. And make sure you subscribe so you get all the content that comes with our channel. Now we're gonna go inside and enjoy a drink at the historic Stonewall Inn. That's right. Bye guys. Bye. Okay, we are, <sighs> Jesus Christ. Enjoying the nature in Savannah. Um, okay. Okay, we are beaming into, oh, Jesus <laughs> I sent some outtakes from this. Yeah, it's Bugs Liner, I'm gonna yeah. have to fight the power.